have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream, and I'm set up. Uh, it's not much, but it's going to get the job done. Uh, you can kind of see our living room here, how much I've taken up as far as in the living room. The nice thing is, is the uh, table that I'm sitting at, uh, the workbench, it's portable. Uh, it folds up, and you can do it like in 30 seconds, literally 30 seconds. Uh, it's, it's a little heavy, but it'll fold up and go out of the way. So I'm set up as far as shooting videos, and I wanted to go to RV Daydream and that channel first, so here we are. I'm not going to dilly-dally around because i got a lot of stuff to cover. We've been talking about this, or I've been talking about this with you guys now for, oh, I don't know, quite a while. With that said, first, the camera that I'm shooting with. This is probably my go-to camera for most of my review videos and our sit-down video. So whenever Heidi and I is doing a sit-down talk, this is the camera that we go to. And the reason is, uh, it's just a good automatic camera. I'm not one into manual settings. I like to just put it on automatic and let it go to town. So whenever we're walking around parks and stuff like that, there's sometimes I will bring this camera. And the reason is, it has the most unbelievable image stabilization that you've ever seen. It has an optic eye inside that actually moves whenever you walk uh, to dampen that movement. Plus it has digital image stabilization to help out with that also. As you can see it sitting on the tripod here, it tells me a lot of information as far as my audio, what it sounds like, and also uh, the tripod mode goes into effect automatically because everything is automatic uh, whenever you've got it in this smart mode. Back whenever I started shooting videos for YouTube on my other channel I just had an old Sony camera it wasn't anything special it was horrible video quality it was definitely a camera to take pictures it was just a point and shoot but I liked the portability and I did my earliest videos with that camera however I wanted to step up I watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I didn't have a lot of money that I wanted to invest into it because at that time I wasn't getting anything back from shooting videos nor was I messing around with Amazon affiliates at that time I just wanted a good camera that I could shoot DIY videos with and how-to videos so that's when I went to this camera here okay so what this camera here is other than scratched up is a Canon ELF 300 HS it's a power shot and the best thing about this camera is that it's so portable and it shoots unbelievable video I could not be happier it's 1080p but it's only at like oh I don't know 25 frames per second something to that effect um, I like to shoot in 60 frames per second the only downfall to this camera uh, is that it only shoots 10 minutes at a time and it does go through batteries if you're shooting video for some time so if I was to shoot let's say a 40 minute video I would definitely have uh, over an hour's worth of shooting probably about an hour and a half worth of shooting and what that means is the batteries would have to be replaced um, what I'll do is I'll show you and let you listen to this camera and let you see what it looks like now again it has not the best battery life and videos can only be 10 minutes long and then the camera shuts off automatically it's only in 1080 HD mode I guess you can say and the reason is is they have some sort of I don't know taxation or something that's involved that if it shot longer than that it would be considered more of a camcorder than just a point-and-shoot camera but it did a good job and you can hear the audio the audio is not the best it's not bad. Now, also, wind noise. Um, there's ways to put little buffers on top to knock down the wind, but basically what I'm saying is the camera that you're currently seeing me on, the Canon ELF 300HS, is a unbelievable starter camera to do vlogs. It's lightweight. It's real quick to open. You can start your video right away. Easy in the pocket. You gotta watch when you hold it. Make sure you don't put your fingers over the mic. But other than that, it does a great job. It is a really good camera. Plus, it has a, 
a good field of view. That was the other thing. It has a pretty wide angle. Uh, just a great camera. Of course, I'll have a link to everything that I talk about today <laughs> in my description below, so expect a big long description. Okay, let's get back to all the other gear. Most of my shooting's done with this little action cam. This is a Sony AS100V. They're not very expensive. It's a good way to get your action shots, and I like this for so many reasons. It was a little bit less than a GoPro. I like that it's more slim than the GoPro. The other thing that this has, which the GoPro don't, is in its current form, the way you see it right now, I can use it in the rain. It's actually waterproof to some extent. I don't know how deep you could go with it. Probably not that deep at all. And I mean like maybe a foot. But splash proof is what they say it is. There's seals on the battery covers and all the ports. And it's really nice because a lot of you guys that shoot with the GoPro, you know that there's an issue with using that waterproof case and the microphone. That's the same with this one. Uh, let me go to my bag here, which we'll talk about this in a second too. And if I pull out one of the cases, you can see here's the waterproof case for this one. And it allows the same blockage of sound that the GoPro does. But I hardly ever have to use this because again, this is waterproof. The other thing that's really great about it, you can get a wristband for it like you've seen in my videos. And what that does is allow you to live view see what you're shooting. But you don't even need that. You can use your phone or you can use, like in my case, a tablet. And you can see whatever the camera sees, that's what the tablet gets to see and you can control your start and stop with this so if you have this on a tripod and you're shooting a, a video of yourself um, you can start and stop the video and see what you're doing on your phone or tablet it's a real simple program there's a slight delay to it but not enough to really be concerned about the other thing this has over the GoPro at the time and I don't know if they've changed since I first bought this um, this has built-in image stabilization which the GoPros didn't at the time that I bought this. This is a really good action cam. It's done me very, very well for a really long time. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do, as you can see here, I'm taking off the tripod mount because um, this is what allows it to be mounted directly on a tripod. Let's say I want to use this camera as a camcorder. Um, if I open these two ports, uh, first of all, there's a place for an external mic down here, so I could run my current microphone that I have plugged into the camera that you're hearing the audio on. I can plug it into this, and I've done it. Um, actually, again, on my other channel, I've done reviews of vlogging gear, but the nice thing about this is you to plug this camera in, and I'm not sure how this is going to work with it synced up to my tablet, but we'll see. I think it'll still be okay. We'll plug it in, close the door, and now you have a camcorder, just a little camcorder, um, just like a big camcorder. So this is really nice that if I'm out shooting with this, I can see right on the screen without going to my phone, without going to the live view remote, without going to my tablet, and this will allow me to actually do playback too. I love this thing. This action cam is, again, it's just great. I've, I've always loved these things. Um, so much that I found this for $50 on Craigslist. This is an AS30, and I used this for some shooting. Uh, the very last video that I did, uh, I used this one, and that was me inside the garage. Now, this one doesn't like the poor lighting that the garage had, as you could obviously tell. So, uh, again, same thing. This one can go inside that LCD pack and become a camcorder, or... I can sync this to my tablet, I can sync this to my phone, I can do the same thing, and or the, the wrist thing, and I can switch. So I can set up two different cameras, and with the wrist view, or my phone or tablet, I can switch back and forth between the two to start or stop the recordings, or to see what I'm recording, to see the, the video. So great, great piece. All the AS, the AS15, the AS20, the AS30, and then the AS100, and then I think the AS200 uh, was the last one. You can use the same gear that I just talked about, like this LCD pack. And they also have this thing called a skeleton frame uh, that allows you to mount it on a tripod while still leaving this door open. Uh, so you can put your external microphone in. 
they they all utilize the same equipment, which is really nice. So just like the GoPro, it has a good support system as far as buying things for it. As far as the camcorder that I'm shooting with, I talked about that one already. And I like that one so much, and I like the angle, I like everything about it, but I wanted to get something that was a little bit cheaper that did the exact same view, basically. And that's when I bought this camcorder. And this camcorder is an HDR CX380. The one that you're currently seeing me on is an HDR PJ430V. <sighs> what a lot of letters. Now, you can get the same camcorder in a CX430V, the only difference is this one here has a projector built into it. On the back of the LCD screen, you can actually project a movie if you want to, what you filmed for the day, or you can plug in an HDMI cable and you can project whatever you want through the camcorder onto a wall. Um, the quality is okay. It's not bad. I didn't get it for the projector. I got it because it was the cheapest one at the time. I, I bought it in a new used condition. It was an open box type situation and I got a great deal on it. I highly doubt that you could find the camcorder that I'm currently shooting with for under $375, maybe $400. Um, when they first came out they were $800. They're still in demand because of that optical eye that's in there and that image stabilization. It's really cool. It's called BOSS. It's Balanced Optical Steady Shot. Of course it has digital image stabilization as does this one. And I really like this one. It's a good camcorder. It has a smaller light sensor in it so it doesn't shoot quite as well as that one. But overall it's lightweight and it does a really good job. I think these are about $240. They're not very expensive at all, so um, it's something you might want to think about. As far as camera gear, the very last thing, your phone. This is a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Um, the S7 or S7 Edge is going to be the same as far as the camera is concerned, and the camera is unbelievable on this thing, considering it's a phone. I mean, it's very, very, very good. Uh, the audio is okay, but we'll get into audio here and what you can do to make that a little bit better. I mean, there might be something that I want to shoot, and I don't have a camcorder with me. And even though it has image stabilization, uh, the stabilization's not as great as the one that you're currently watching me on, nor uh, like this one. Um, it's pretty comparable to this, uh, but it it does a pretty good job. It, it's not bad, um, but the quality is there. And if you have it on your hip, that's the most important thing as far as shooting video on YouTube. Uh, the best camera to have is the one that you have on you. Because if you don't have a camera that you carry with you all the time, you're not going to capture half the stuff that you want to. So get a good phone camera because you always have your phone with you for the most part. So now that we've got done with all the photo stuff, um, starting with the beginning with that Canon Elf and then the uh, two action cameras, um, the camera that I'm shooting with and of course the other camcorder and then obviously my phone now we're getting into the audio and the audio is pretty important uh, right now you're listening to me on a Rode mic that I have just out of reach here um, or out of camera view uh, and it's a really good mic it doesn't require any batteries it plugs directly into the camera and it gives you a good clear quality um, you hear background noise because of the traffic that goes on outside and you might even hear the lights buzzing off in the distance a little bit here but it's really good as far as not being tethered up to you um, I could run a lavalier mic directly into the camera I've done that quite a few times and it's appropriate for certain videos that I shoot a lot of the times whenever Heidi and I is doing a uh, update of some kind we like to do a microphone like this because it does capture all the noise around us. It gives you more of a sense of being with us in the area. And it's not so focused on just what we're having to say. So now talking about lavalier mics, um, there's a couple of different ways to go. I've got four of them. And I'll tell you that two of them are really nice. One of them came with a kit, so it's real expensive to buy. It's a Rode. Um, there's another one, it's a Mike J44 Pro Mic. It's a little lavalier mic. It's like $30. I also have this mic here. This is a Sony ECM DS70P. 
a very good stereo microphone. Uh, you can plug this into a camera directly. You'll get some really good audio compared to the built-in microphones that a lot of the cameras have. And again, whenever I had that little pocket cam, this microphone was just outstanding. And the nice thing is, is you can actually just set it down um, and plug it in directly. And this becomes a microphone too. Uh, it sounds really good. It's not bad at all. Um, again, all the links will be down below for this. I just don't use this one as much as I used to, uh, but it served its purpose and it did a really good job. The other microphones that I have, and I love the lavalier mics, is these newer. It's N-E-E-W-E-R, so nearer. <laughs> newer, I just pronounce it newer, mics. And I've bought them before, used them in plenty of my videos. It's a little bit of a bigger, bulbous type bulb foam cover that it has on it and it sounds pretty good you have to turn your audio up on whatever you're shooting it needs boosted uh, compared to a lot of the more expensive uh, lavalier mics or lapel mics it's just the clip-on mic um, the thing is is you can buy a pack of three for like seven dollars three microphones for seven dollars I couldn't believe it um, so I bought six of them just to have them as backup and Heidi and I used them, and the quality's really good. I mean, considering that I just talked about that Mike JK lavalier lapel mic, and that one's $30. Uh, the quality on that one's very good. You get to turn down the boost on your camera uh, as far as your manual audio setting. But compared to a $6 for three microphones, is it that much better? No, I, I would go with the cheap ones to start with. Uh, then I've got another system which let me show you here um, I got it all in a case because it gets really crazy but this is um, something that you can step up to then after that this is a road link uh, this is the uh, transmitter and this is the receiver and of course this is a wireless system it works off of Bluetooth and it has a couple channels that it bounces back and forth between uh, these things are really really good uh, they go quite a distance it's very clear there's really no interruption in sound it is if I have a mic on and I'm talking directly into the camera it does that good of a job um, these are a little bit more expensive it's like four hundred dollars but it's nice that you can move around and have that on you and be mobile and not really worry about as the audio get being captured is it falling off that kind of a thing I'm going to end up picking up another one of those for Heidi uh, so we can do walk throughs walk arounds and you're going to capture both of our audio uh, the thing that we used to do and this is a really good idea if you guys want to do audio and capture good quality audio and sync it all this is stuff is done in post-production so basically when you're editing your video you have to match the audio from the camera that shot the video with the audio that was captured through another digital voice recorder and that's what this is it's a zoom h1 and I've got a couple of them uh, this one's Heidi's this one's mine what it allows is a couple of things um, if you want to do interviews or if you want to talk to people directly if you just set this in between the two of you it's very sensitive it's very clear and you won't believe it whenever you put headphones on and you listen to what this thing can do it's just amazing how much it can pick up um, if you're doing an interview you can pop on some sort of a, a windscreen um, like one of these bulbs let me see if I can get it on here real quick there you go uh, you can do an interview you can just back and forth and again this thing picks up everything it is so clear what Heidi and I did in the past and this is what you can do if you want to start off slow buy a camera that's pretty decent and it could be a GoPro uh, could be an action cam could be your phone it doesn't make a difference what it is make sure you have really good audio so they can hear you and the way that you can do it really cheap is to pick up one of these zoom H1s and get a splitter and split the sound coming out of it and I'll show you what I mean here you can split it just like this and now this gives you two jacks to plug in two separate microphones you can put one clip on mic onto let's say me and then on the other side I'll plug one in for Heidi 
and whenever we record we're recording both of our voices directly to this digital recorder and you have to sync your audio that's why you get on those movies you know take one you know action that kind of thing what you need to do for your editing whenever you start is just three claps one clap a loud noise something and that makes it easier to match up now I use power director 14 and it matches it up automatically I just have to highlight the audio tracks that I want to sync and then I hit a sync button and it finds those markers automatically and it puts everything together and that point I can pick what audio I want to use for whatever picture I shot so these things will work really well for that and that's why we have two of them because there was times that I would sync three audio sources the camera that I was shooting with and the zoom mic that Heidi had on her with a lapel mic and then the zoom that I had with my lapel mic after we were done with our videoing whatever we were doing um, you know of course we just carried these in our back pocket or wherever um, after we were finished I just synced it all together and we had audio that was direct now of course like I said the other option to doing that is getting uh, a system like this and what this does is um, you plug this directly into the camera um, it mounts somewhere on the camera and then whoever's walking around has got this clipped to their belt and their microphones plugged into this and the microphone that comes with this is exceptional but it's like a hundred dollars just to buy the microphone separately um, so <laughs> if you're gonna spend a hundred dollars for a microphone you might as well spend an extra three hundred and get the whole shooting match um, the only downfall to these is since they work off a of Bluetooth signal you have to have two receivers for two different people to be put into the camera so what I would have to do is I have to run the output of this into a splitter like that and then the other receiver that's just like this one goes into this side and then this plugs into the camera and then it would pick up both and put them both into the camera now the Sennheisers which are really good and I was looking at buying a Sennheiser uh, the problem is the Sennheiser started about six hundred and fifty dollars and to buy one extra receiver is about two hundred and seventy dollars so you're talking basically a thousand dollars for what you could do with this one for eight hundred dollars I mean it's saving you two hundred dollars I'll take that two hundred dollars savings for the inconvenience of having to run two uh, receivers whenever it's Heidi and I doing this together um, most of the time it's not though it's just me so I would rather have it set up this way and again save two hundred dollars of course uh, you got a lot of rechargeable battery stuff this is on a loop um, I got a charger and I just recharge my double A's as I need them uh, this takes double A's those receivers that I just showed you those take double A's or they can be USB powered um, that's why I have this USB battery bank uh, you can plug that directly into one of those uh, receivers to power them. Uh, it's really nice. It, it's, I mean, as far as audio is concerned, I'm pretty much set. I just have to make sure that I get something covered for Heidi whenever we're being mobile uh, that makes it to where I don't have to sync everything in post-production. Even though it's an easy process, sometimes you have camera breaks, and the camera break causes audio disruption whenever you're trying to sync everything. So i just rather do it this way now as far as all the gear that I have now let's get into the lighting uh, you saw the picture that I had of the living room um, I have those reflector dishes that you can buy at Lowe's they're not very expensive at all and then I've bought daylight bulbs they're only 27 watt CFLs but they are daylight and they're pretty decent other than the noise that comes off of them whenever they're used with these little dog dish bowls they put off a good daylight I like it doesn't take very many I've got four lights going right now and you can see it lights up pretty well because it's a it's a pretty dark living room that we're in right now as far as tripods I have three tripods two of them I use all the time I've had them forever um, they're Velbon CX 300s I don't even know if you can buy them anymore what I would suggest is if you don't have tripods uh, go to your local thrift store go to your local pawn shop you can pick them up really inexpensive I have a real nice Solidex tripod that I picked up for ten dollars at a local secondhand store 
and it's nice. It has a crank. It has a fluid head, so it's real smooth to pan, uh, all that stuff. And again, it was really inexpensive. Now, as far as other mounts, um, here's a little tiny mount. These things aren't very expensive. It'll allow you to, to put on any kind of a, a camera that you want. It's just a quarter-inch thread. And, of course, you can set it up then, and you can point the camera wherever you want. Obviously, there's no camera in here right now. We could put one in, though. There you go. <laughs> so you could point the camera then wherever you want. Uh, of course, it articulates to give you different angles, pointing up, down, whatever. This is really good whenever I'm doing my DIY stuff. I'm underneath the car. I might have to hang this off of a bracket or a leaf spring or something like that, or set it down on the ground and point it up at the gas tank that I'm working on, that kind of a thing. So this is really nice. It's not extremely sturdy for bigger cameras. It's just for real little light cameras. Um, I could put my phone on here, and I've had. Uh, it, it does an okay job, but I have bigger ones for that. Now, these are the go-to. Everybody has these things. They're Jobies, and they're called Gorilla Pods. They're really nice. This one has a, a level that's built into it. You can see here, I don't have it hooked in. It just clips in. So basically what you do is you take this piece here, this little slug, and you quarter-inch screw it into the bottom of your camcorder or whatever mount you want. And then it stays on there, just like in this case, it's on this little camera pack deal. And then you just slide it on, and then that's it. It's locked in place. It's not going anywhere. And it's pretty sturdy. Uh, not only that, but it has a level built into it. So it'll tell you where you are at as far as being level. Um, the tripod has a swivel to it, you can see here. And then it's just got a thumb screw that holds everything. If you back off the thumb screw just a little bit, that'll allow you to turn it. If you back it off a lot, you'll see what happens here. <laughs> so you can see the adjustment that it has. You can adjust it all different ways. They give you extra height if you're shooting a, a selfie of yourself, if you're walking or whatever, you can see kind of the deal. Now you can see how these come in handy whenever you're doing like a selfie shoot because you have an LCD screen, you can see whatever the camera is seeing in the background. Of course, you have a length to your arm and then the height of the tripod um, that gives you a more level shot so you're not shooting up at yourself. Uh, the other thing is then whenever you get to a location that you want to sit down and talk, you know, you've got it. You just open it up and you're done. You, you're set up. Um, the other thing, like I said, you can do, you can wrap it around a tree, you can hang it off a fence, it does quite a few things. So this is invaluable. Um, they're rubber, all these gray pieces are rubber. They're kind of like an eraser, so there's grip to them. Uh, they do a really good job, and I highly suggest that you pick up one of these if you're doing a lot of shooting. Of course, everybody needs one of these. This is just a phone mount. This will allow you to put your phone in here and pinch it. And that way it can be mounted on a tripod, just like we were talking before. Um, we'll go ahead and back this little one off. We'll show you what that looks like. There you go. And now you can see your phone is set up to where you can film with it. You can film yourself, whatever. They're not very expensive. You can pick them up anywhere. I'm not going to include the link to this because there's so many of them. Uh, I don't even know if they still have this brand anymore. That Action Cam has all kinds of different mounts that's available for it. I got quite a few of them. I got them to where you can clip them on a hat. Um, I got it to where uh, you can bolt it on a handlebars of a moped like I've done in the past. Here's for a low shot. It's an X grip, but you can see it kind of helps you stabilize whenever you're shooting. Um, of course, this can just be sat down, and you can film that way. You can prop it up. Uh, there's another place up top for another mount. I've removed the mount that's up here uh, because I don't utilize it like I should. But you can put your microphone up here if you want to do that. Of course, uh, this grip, you can shoot in any direction, up and down. Uh, but this is kind of made for, like, skateboarding. You can kind of hold it low to the ground as you roll along. Um, or if you walk along, it just gives you a different aspect of your shooting. Uh, I don't really get into the artistic part of it. I'm kind of a, a nuts and bolts type guy. I'm more functional than fashion. Uh, so I don't really give you those different angles. I guess I could for more entertainment value, but uh, I like this for the function part of it. When I first got this Canon Elf, um, I was having a problem with stabilization and putting my fingers over the microphone. And I've got this little grip right here. 
and this thing is great. All this is is it's weighted. It's kind of heavy. It's made of extruded aluminum, and then there's a foam pad on it. It just has a quarter inch. Now you would think that something as stupid as this wouldn't make a difference, but it helps you steady our lightweight camera. And you can see all I got to do to go, you know, as I'm talking and I'm shooting video of myself, and I say, hey, well, let's look at this. All I got to do is turn it around and again good nice steady shot the padded grip helps with it and there's no chance of me putting my fingers over the microphones which was nice or smudging a lens or bumping anything so I used this a lot I would have to say probably about 70 to 100 videos were shot with this setup right here again it comes apart so simple that I can just put this in my pocket or the camera in my pocket or I can actually, for some of my bigger shorts, like my cargo shorts, I can put this in my cargo pocket just like it is, just upside down. This is kind of nice to have if you have a small action cam and you're wanting to, to move around and do a shot to steady it, or if you have something like this, or even your phone, uh, real inexpensive. Now, whenever you get to where you might want to put it on a tripod, there's a tripod mount. If you didn't want to spend the money that's involved with these uh, Gorilla Pods, uh, which I can't blame you. Uh, they make this too. It's an ultrapod and it's a different system. It uses Velcro to connect to poles or, or anything round for that matter or square. And you can see it's kind of a 90 degree in here. So let's say this is a branch. You can uh, put this on the branch and then you run the Velcro through the strap. Let's go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. run the velcro through the strap and just like that it'll hold it in position then you can loosen this and it'll allow you to move your camera around this is on a little ball mount it moves around in a bunch of different directions and then of course up and down so made in the USA really nice um, the other thing that I liked about this one is whenever you are not shooting anything that uh, requires you to strap it to a tree these legs pop out and now this becomes a tripod uh, the only downfall that I have with this one is it seems like with the action cams whenever I'm using my onboard audio uh, sometimes there's noise being transferred through this plastic handle into the camera so if I'm rubbing my finger on it my hand or whatever it seems like it transmits that up into the camera a little bit more than I like other than that this is really great it's got rubber feet on it, it doesn't slide around really really good piece itself alright so now we move to this sort of vlogging gear setup and I really like this one it's got a rubber handle that's off to the side of course I can open this up and now I've got a screen that I can see uh, what I'm doing what I'm shooting and not only that but I can put other accessories on just because it has these slots up top it allows me to t put these little quarter inch screw shoes on here so I can put other stuff on like I can put an external microphone like my road mic that I'm currently videoing with and I can plug it directly into my camcorder and allow myself to talk and see what's going on now with these camcorders I have to use this skeleton frame uh, to actually plug a microphone in directly I can use this exact same shoe mount to mount one of these receivers plug that in then plug that into the camera and allow me to again talk and of course it's got a quarter inch so whenever you get to wherever you want to go you can just mount it on some sort of a tripod um, this is kinda nice to have I'm really glad that I've got this one also Okay, something else that I have and I've got my microphone hooked to this so hopefully it doesn't cause any problems is this clamp and I've got two of them I've used them for almost everything and you can see here it just has a real strong spring I mean it takes me quite a bit to get it open that far and once it's on there it, it really holds itself again I, I know I'm messing with the microphone sorry about that and you can mount everything to it it's got uh, the ability to hold any of the cameras that I have uh, of course the action cams you can mount them upside down and then you can flip the image so uh, you can mount this thing up in the air this way clamp it to whatever you want and it will allow you to put the camcorder and shoot right at you out the window whatever it, it does a really good job so the case um, this is a case logic and it's probably gonna it's gotta be one of the best ones out there I mean I really researched this thing and I can't believe how many pockets it has I sometimes lose stuff it's got so many pockets 
which I shouldn't. It's pretty easy to see everything. It's just a lot. So this has a pouch here. There's a whole bunch of different compartments that are inside uh, to carry whatever you want. I mean, it, everything's zippered. Uh, the nice thing about it, it's pretty well padded. And of course, this part here is all the compartments have little Velcro dividers. You can divide them however you want. All my camera gear goes in here. It is a backpack, but it also has a big zip pouch to allow a laptop to go in here. It'll fit my 15-inch uh, Asus ROG gaming laptop, um, which I don't game. I just do video editing, but it fits in here. Now, I have this sling-type backpack that I carry whenever I'm just doing videos with something like this in the action cam um, and I'll carry some audio equipment with me too it's just a little sling but if I'm going somewhere and I'm not exactly sure how I want to shoot the video or if I've got coverage that I want to do that might be questionable if I go just one route I'll bring the whole thing it's not heavy um, even with the laptop in it it's overall it's comfortable with the padded straps and everything once you get them adjusted it does a good job also I have windshield mount suction cups a couple of those um, of course I keep those in the truck whenever we're going somewhere that's video worthy we might put those up in the windows give you a couple of different shots there that windshield is such a big piece and it's supported by the entire suspension of the truck plus with the digital image stabilization that these cameras have it allow you to drive down the road and actually have a pretty decent shot problem with that a lot of noise so you gotta run a microphone directly for those cameras unless you want to talk really loud which that's usually what we do <laughs> what we've done in the past but all this gear is overage I mean, really, when it comes right down to it, all you need is a really good cell phone. Who doesn't want to have a nice cell phone? I mean, it's not a big deal. And just because I've got this one doesn't mean that there's not other ones out there a lot cheaper that do a pretty good job. I had an iPhone 4. That camera is pretty good. My Moto X, that camera was pretty good. And I was really happy with the quality of it. Uh, this one just does a little bit better job. So if you just shoot with your phones, remember the biggest part is image stabilization. Make sure it's turned on on your phone if it has that ability. If not, real slow movements. Make sure you're not bouncing around. Also with editing, if you're shooting in portrait mode, which I recommend that you do because our TVs are rectangular and long left to right, um, not so much this way, if you're shooting with something that wide, whenever you're editing, if you got decent editing software, you should be able to click an image stabilization thing that does it all by itself. Or you can let YouTube do it. I don't know how many of you guys have posted YouTube videos up and it said we've detected shakiness in your video. Do you want to stabilize it? Um, try it out. If you don't have any words or anything like that on the bottom of your screen or anything solid, um, it would probably do a pretty good job for you. So looking at all this stuff, I can see that I get a lot of money that's invested in this stuff. Not as much as it could be and I'm not a professional at all it's funny because if you earn money at doing something whatever you're doing is actually considered a profession <laughs> I do earn money shooting video I do want to put some of that money back into buying equipment that helps the video and the quality of the video a little bit but you can tell I'm no professional uh, this isn't necessarily the best stuff for you this is what I use and you can see there's just a lot of different options and I will be 100% honest here. I get really lazy whenever I shoot video sometimes because I just want to make sure I get the video shot. I want to get it done. I want to capture it and be done with it. So what do I do when I'm lazy? This is it right here. This action cam, this LCD screen, and this Gorillapod. I will take this almost everywhere that we go. Whenever we go anywhere, whenever we're out camping, I'll bring this with us. It's real easy to carry. It's real easy to set up. It's real nice to use. Now, if we're doing something like we were riding the mopeds and we wanted to cover some footage, but I didn't want to deal with all of this. I mean, this is some weight to it. There's some weight to it, and I didn't want to carry it in my pocket. Then at that point, I'm using this, just this little pod with the camera just mounted directly on it. The nice thing about it is, the way this is right now, if we have a pouring down rainstorm, I can go set this out in the rain, just like this. Just go set it up and leave it out there. It's not gonna get hurt because these action cams are waterproof. 
um, not the AS20, but uh, the AS100 and I think the 200 also um, are waterproof just like this. And it's lightweight. Again, I can just slide it in my pocket and uh, it does a really good job. So if you want to be lazy, if you want something that's real easy to do, if you want good, decent audio, but not great audio, this is susceptible to wind noise and you want a decent picture, uh, this is the way to go. Uh, the problem with this, of course, you can't see what you're shooting because I don't have an LCD screen, so you want to get the live view remote. This thing straps to your wrist if you don't mind carrying this thing on your wrist. Again, you can start and stop your camera with this. You can uh, change the modes. You can go from video camcorder to uh, still shot that kind of a thing of course starting and stopping the video if you don't want to wear this on your wrist and you are carrying your phone that's fine uh, you can Bluetooth to this thing connect to it and that's that's the way to go now if you have wireless data if you really want to go into some real strange stuff um, this also has a GPS that's built into it but it also has the ability to live stream um, you see some of these channels that are on like Roku and your computer called live stream or Ustream um, you can stream directly through your Wi-Fi connection or your phone's connection uh, through data usage uh, to write to whatever source you want to. So if I connect to Ustream to my account, um, I can turn on streaming, I can have this camera connected, and whatever's going on I can stream live. So if um, we start getting attacked by zombies out here, um, I'll go ahead and start streaming live and we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen though. So, the Lazy Way Action Cam, this little pod right here, and you'll be set. Um, if you want to get a little bit more involved, uh, get an LCD pack with the Action Cam, and that way you can see what you're doing without the use of uh, a wrist or your phone. Um, if you're extremely lazy, just use your phone. Um, but if you want to get more involved and get more intimate, something like this, go ahead and get a camcorder. Um, that's what they're designed for. Uh, they've got a good view, they get good angles, they got good adjustment to lighting and focus. I mean, I have this on automatic, I haven't done anything with it, and pretty much I've stayed in focus the most of the video, I hope. And the audio that it captures is pretty good too. Uh, I don't have it cranked up, but it's pretty close to uh, being middle of the road. So, this is all my junk. Um, I'm glad that I finally got to this. I know this video is really, really long. But I wanted to cover everything that I could and why you should have some of this stuff and what I think. So I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a review on something uh, that I got for camping. But it's kind of nice to have around the house here occasionally too. And I'll tell you why on my next video. So as always guys, I hope to see you out there. Bye.